Hello, today's topic is yellow fever. We have a 10 year old boy from Rajasthan who presented with fever and jaundice. He had a history of travel to South America one week prior to this. He later developed renal failure and hemorrhagic complications. Blood investigation showed thrombocytopenia and elevated liver enzymes. So what is the most probable diagnosis? What are the differential diagnosis? And how can this be prevented? Now coming to yellow fever, it is a viral infection. It is caused by an RNA virus of flavivirus family. It is spread by Aedes aegypti mosquitoes and reservoir hosts are monkeys and humans are accidental hosts. It can affect people at any age and children usually have milder infection when compared to adults. The incubation period is 3 to 6 days and because of that the quarantine period has been fixed at 6 days. It is epidemic in uh, South America and Africa. Coming to pathogenesis, the central pathogenic event is a direct injury of the liver uh, by the virus. It results in impaired uh, liver function in both in biosynthesis and detoxification. Renal dysfunction can occur in the form of acute tubular necrosis because of pre-renal failure. In the heart, uh, there can be myocardial fiber uh, degeneration and fatty infiltration. The brain may show uh, edema and particle hemorrhages. Hemorrhage, hemorrhagic features are very severe in uh, the, uh, yellow fever. It is maybe due to the vitamin K dependent clo uh, clotting factors. The production is affected because of a liver problem. There can be disseminated intravascular coagulation. Viral damage of platelets and endothelial cells can result in, result in uh, pro-hemorrhagic factors. So all these uh, reasons have been postulated for the reason of uh, cause of um, hemorrhagic manifestation in yellow fever. Coming to the clinical features, most of the infections are uh, abortive, uh, especially in children. It is characterized by fever and headache, just like any viral infection will just come and go. The classic form of uh, um, yellow fever, they have symptoms of fever, headache, myalgia, anorexia, nausea and vomiting. On examination, uh, they show prostration, conjunctival injection, flushing of face and neck, reddening of tongue and relative bradycardia. And there may be two three days of remission and then reappearance of all these symptoms in a very severe form reappearance of fever vomiting epigastric pain jaundice because of uh, liver failure dehydration dehydration can lead to pre-renal failure and acute tubular necrosis hemorrhages due to causes already mentioned dic vitamin k dependent factors production is less and uh, due to pro-hemorrhagic features because of uh, endothelial and platelet damage by the virus directly because of renal damage there can be albuminuria patient can have hypotension renal failure delirium convulsion and coma death may occur after 7 to 10 days and the fatality in severe cases is almost 50 percent some patients who survive the acute phase the acute uh, hemorrhagic phase and uh, the liver failure phase may later succumb to renal failure and myocardial damage Diagnosis is mainly clinical and epidemiological diagnosis as in the earlier case the history of travel to uh, South America was the catch in that case scenario and the symptoms had started within a week. The incubation period being 3 to uh, 6 days. The specific diagnosis depends on detection of virus or viral antigen in acute phase blood samples or antibody assays. Blood as such shows leukopenia, prolonged clotting time. PT, APTT, thrombocytopenia, hyperbilirubinemia, elevated liver enzymes, albuminuria and azotemia. Hypoglycemia may be present in severe cases. ECG abnormalities such as bradycardia and STT changes may be seen. Uh, differential diagnosis, any viral hemorrhagic fever including dengue can be considered. Treatment is mainly supportive, sponging and acetaminophen to reduce high temperature, vigorous fluid replacement for losses, correcting acid-base imbalance, maintaining nutritional intake to lessen the severity of hypoglycemia, Avoiding hepatotoxic drugs, uh, also renal toxic drugs, blood products if bleeding manifestations, renal failure may require dialysis. Prevention is simple, you have got a yellow fever 17D vaccine, which is a live attenuated vaccine. It's a single dose 0.5 ml subcutaneous infection, uh, injection and, and it has to be taken at least 10, day, 10 days prior to arrival at that particular region, that is South America and Africa. The vaccine is valid for 10 years and the validity starts from 6 days after the administration of vaccination because that's the time duration we need for the development of immunity, 7 to 10 days required. Uh, it is um, contraindicated in babies less than 6 months and in immunocompromised people. The first question coming to the MCQ, all are true about yellow fever vaccine except it's a live vaccine, it's true. It's valid up to 10 years starting from 6 days after administration, that's true. Immunity develops after 7 to 10 days of administration, 
that is also true so uh, here the answer is none of the above the second question who first demonstrated that yellow fever is transmitted by aedes Aeg uh, aegypti mosquito it was walter reed ronald rose we know it was malaria uh, and uh, mosquitoes bruce was the one who uh, connected tsetse fly and african sleeping sickness now coming to the third question to prevent yellow fever aedes aegypti index should be less than one percentage presentation was based on nelson textbook of pediatrics and op guide dokumenta